Hello everyone. Today we are excited to have um, uh, Hamid Zakir, a well experienced uh, individual in the uh, biotechnology and uh, the related industry. Uh, without further ado, I let her to introduce herself, herself and talk about the today's topic. Thank you very much. Oh, well, thank you, uh, Professor Ahadi. Um, hello. Um, I am uh, humbled that you invited me to your class to share my experience and talk about energy and analytics, data analytics. Um, so it's a pleasure to be with you today. So, um, Do you all see this slide of about me? Uh, no, please click on the second slide. I did. You don't see it? We just see the first slide, energy and data. But... That's interesting. Because now I am on the second slide and you should be able to see that. Let me move it to the other screen. I have, I'm working off of two different the screens. Yeah, uh, let me see that. Now you see the, okay, awesome. So, the so we don't see the bottom of your screen, but okay, now we see everything. Awesome, very good, awesome. So uh, this, is, this is my story. This is about me, uh, where I was, what I did. And um, so basically I started my career as a career scientist graduating from college, right after college, working for different biotech, big pharma, and academic institution. I started my career working at Monsanto, which is an agricultural company. Uh, I've worked on um, testing chemical uh, for in support of FDA, APA approval. And after three years, I was recruited to work um, on human genome project at uh, Washington University School of Medicine. There I um, worked on all kinds of genes, um, on human genome, mapping human genome, and I worked on SNP. Um, those are markers that distinguishes different diseases, distinguishes different population. And during that time, um, there was a case of O.J. Simpson, and we, um, with the DNA testing, we could pinpoint exactly which, um, which um, uh, like category of, of population with a been a pioneer in the field. Uh, for, for TV, radio, he was um, declining all of them. And anyway, uh, I had so many publications there um, uh, at PubMed um, and National Institute of Health. And uh, after that, I, during that time, I was managing a sequencing core facility. And it's just, I have always worked hard and I strive to do better. Um, so it was a natural move for me to pursue my MBA. So I went back to school at WashU um, MBA school and um, uh, finished, my, finished my studies while working full time and taking care of my son as a single mom. And then um, I was recruited back to Monsanto, but this time on a pharmaceutical sector and we worked on Celebrex before it became um, uh, became uh, public, um, available for the public. So um, the Celebrex was a hot commodity. Pharmacia came, bought us, and then Pfizer wanted to go get a piece of the pie. So Pfizer came, bought us, and then Monsanto split as an um, agricultural company, and Pfizer stayed as a pharmaceutical. And then later on, Monsanto was purchased by Bayer. So during this time, after my MBA, which was right after um, September 11, uh, the job prospect was not good for MBA um, graduates. 
I was making more money at my science position. So I continued science. I um, did some self, but I went back to science and worked at Sigma Aldrich. I engineered cell line to be used for therapeutic, to be used for drug discovery. And actually the cell line, some a couple of, uh, not couple, maybe five cell lines that I uh, created, engineered, they are still on their website. They're still selling them uh, across the um, world. And um, then I, I worked so hard, I was burned out and I just, wanted to do something different with my life. I was not bound by, I have to work to get money or something. So I wanted to do something that fulfilled my life. And I looked at so many different things. I actually got my license in real estate as well. And I was teaching. At, I started teaching at her store I, and then continued um, working, uh, teaching at Webster University. And actually one semester Webster University invited me to go to the China uh, campus and I taught international business to two cohort group there. Um, it was tough, but it was awesome experience. I um, uh, traveled through China and uh, saw different places. It was just awesome experience. And so when I came back, I felt like I wanted to do something something extended my experience and I felt like another analytics was the um, the uh, something that would fulfill my interest so I got a graduate I uh, signed in for a graduate certificate in data analytic at Webster University I finished it in a year and since it was a career change for me I didn't mind to start from ground zero I applied for an internship. I got hired by Aspire. Very nice company, very nice people. I can tell you, I, I have been, um, all my experience have been so awesome uh, ever since I started. My internship project blossomed. And it, it brought revenue to the company and they hired me after that. And then shortly after that, they promoted me. And less than a year later, they promoted me again. So basically, I am making more money than when I was scientist with 20 plus years of experience. And I am so happy because the company is so nice. People are so nice. And, I've, and I'm making a big, uh, big um, contribution. So the thing is, I enjoy doing what I am doing. And I make good money too. So Hopefully your future would be the same as well. Um, so what do I do? Basically, I am an analyst. So I do, uh, I work with data all the time and I analyze them, I visualize them, and I try to make a sense of uh, what these data are telling us. Um, a spy, as a spire, uh, we, an uh, aspire has so many customers, about, about close to 2 million customers. And we serve all um, different territories like Missouri, Alabama, uh, and Mississippi. So I constant, I'm constantly working with different types of data to visualize, visualize in a way that the directors, managers uh, could look at those and pick category of interest and see how their business are doing and see whether they are meeting those objectives that they set in the beginning of the year. For example, recently I made some dashboards for um, Alabama, uh, Gulf and Mississippi where the managers for, for example, residential customers or commercial customers could see where they are standing compared to the goals that they set up for the um, early year. So they can monitor their goal and they can see where, which county, uh, which zip code their business is growing. And they actually can see which sales rep within their team is contributing more to each business. So these are important for um, a business to flourish uh, important for increasing the customer base and it's important for the vitality of uh, the business. 
I'm sorry, I can't share the uh, dashboards or workbooks that are created because of the confidentiality. However, I can share with you a couple of very simple uh, dashboard that I made um, last year um, in the beginning of the, one of them was last year, one of them early this year. And so um, the, if you go to, I work with Tableau a lot. I mentioned that there are some tools that you can use. Tableau, Alteryx, Salesforce, R, and Python. I recommend that you familiarize yourself with uh, all of these. Get some general idea. So when you have a question, when you have a problem, you know, you at least you know which one of, which tool can help you to answer that question. And then you can go learn more and practice more to fulfill that. So I've worked at, uh, since I work as, uh, at Spire Energy, that's a natural gas company. And um, but something that I did first, uh, if you see in here, I have this, I put the link in here. These are linked to Tableau Public where people can uh, create their workbook and put it for the public to view and uh, learn. In here, I compared the benefit of natural gas uh, with propane. If you're familiar with pro propane, uh, one easy um, uh, example of that, these are the tanks that you, you do barbecue. Uh, and this will show the difference in price uh, the co uh, how much it would cost you to um, run uh, use natural gas for grilling compared to propane. So it's cleaner, it's safer, and um, it, it costs uh, less. So basically natural gas, the benefits of natural gas is that it is abundant, it's readily available, it, uh, it costs significant, significantly less than electric and other source of energy and because of the fracking because now we have access to them and uh, that's why it's so much cheaper for us to use it and it's a clean source of energy uh, compared to electric um, with the electric a lot of energy gets lost during transportation um, and while natural gas is uh, almost 90 something percent pure with less um, with less and energy loss. So, um, and then the other workbook that I have in here uh, last year, we, um, the COVID hit and it was early on, New York was high. And so I wanted to see how bad our territory like Alabama, Mississippi, Missouri are doing. So I created maps of the states that we, um, we serve our customers and uh, kind of monitor the in cases and the mortality among the population in those states. I included the map, I included the line graph, and I did that for a while. This was my first, first one, which I did in March. And then I kept it for a while and then everybody was doing it. And I felt like, okay, um, those are much, at, uh, some people they do this for, this is their job and they are doing a lot better than me. And I um, just, I stopped doing that because now all the media after that, all the media news started showing similar stuff. Anyway, so that is a couple of examples that I did. Again, they were, those are very um, beginner uh, elementary um, dashboards that I made. Um, so if you like to learn more about the um, data and the stories, and the, basically data are uh, maybe there are stories with the soul. So the whole purpose of the data is to make, uh, to answer a question. So uh, when you become a data analyst, your goal is to answer questions. And those are the questions that you either come up with or you check with your audience. Who are your audience, your bosses, directors, managers? You talk to them, you meet with them and you ask them, what is it that helps them to make informed decision. And then based on that, you come and you make different visualization and off of those visualization, you make dashboard. And this dashboard have to be so simple um, and so informative that um, the management don't have to guess. Basically, 
Um, these are some of the, the these are in here I have some examples uh, of website that you can find go and look at these very state of the art dashboards that uh, you can you can learn uh, bas basically if you are in the energy sector, if you are in the wind sector, if you are in um, city uh, or if you're in a, um, if you are interested in the COVID cases, these are um, a state of the art dashboard that are created to answer the question that is in your mind. For example, in the COVID-19, you can put your state and see how, uh, how fast the COVID-19 is growing in your state. What's the mortalities? Who are, uh, what, what age category are the patients? So um, these are the questions that might be in your mind and you can go there and you could easily pick, filter, based on your criteria and get your answer. answer. So basically, the essence of data visualization is that you, uh, your audience would look at it and quickly get their answers. It would be simple and the, the answer would jump at them. You want, for example, to see cells this, this year, was it higher than last year or lower? So you can have year over year there and you can color it green means higher or you can color it red means lower or you can put the arrow down or up. Something that jumps at the audience quickly and they can see that answer that this year we did better than that last year. Those are called KPI things by the way. So with the data, you take the data and you tell a story with those data. So why is it so, this, these are all cool. So why should you care? Well, you are a data analyst students, right? You, there are so much data, big data, and you need to analyze them as it, uh, when you get a job, you need to work with this data. They are good for targeted marketing. They're good for management to make decisions. There are um, even people use some of these data to look for job. I have my, my co-worker who made his resume in Tableau. What does that mean? And he posted to his website, uh, to his LinkedIn. That shows that he knows Tableau and he put it in, he put his resume on that. That is proof of proof that he knows how to work with that. So licensing helps definitely. That means that you put the effort in and you took the exam and you became a license. What you see in here, these are hot, hot, hot. You learning R, Python, Tableau, Alteryx, Salesforce, those are the things that gives you job. Luckily, data analysts are in high demand. The, this, this is an unmet needs that everyone is hiring and they get paid well. So to stand aside from the other applicant, you need to build your um, uh, inventory of all these tools, at least get familiar with them, what they are. Everybody says that they are doing machine learning. Machine learning is a buzzword, AI, artificial intelligence. At least get to know some about it. So when you are asked, even if you have not worked with it, you have some idea and you can always show that you are eager to learn and you are eager to um, contribute to the um, business um, bottom line. So most people are saying that they're using a state of art analytics, but they're still stuck in Excel and PowerPoint. PowerPoint is okay because now I'm using PowerPoint to convey my message with you. But Excel, really, I work ex with Excel when I cannot do things in Tableau. Uh, Excel is, to me, is like introductory. Uh, Everything that Excel does, you can do it in Tableau. The visualization is so awesome. It, Excel is just humongous. The, like, let's say 100,000 line in Excel, you can see it in tab, Tableau in like one bar chart. And it's just easy to see. And you can have filter that you can click and you can see your residential, you can see your commercial, you can see which county you have more customers, which county mix. You can use census data. Go check census.gov. I should have 
added to my um, to here data.census.gov. There are massive amount of data there, and I use them on a regular basis too. For example, I like to get demographic of my, our customers. Where are more, for example, for example affluent, affluent customers? Where are more young customers? So when you market, when you do marketing, you market based on the um, customer base that you have. So, um, uh, your professor can share this link with you and you can just um, uh, go and check them out. Let me, for example, let's go uh, look at this one. A hyperlink. Open link. Open link. That takes you John to John Hopkins. Uh, in the beginning, John, when I did my data in on that um, COVID thing, I used dataworld.com. John, John Hopkins hadn't come up with this um, uh, dashboard yet. But this is so interesting. You can see the world in here. And you can filter. These are the cases for all the I, I think you need to, again, uh, click on share so they can see the John Hopkins uh, on your oh, I have to share it again. If I share this, then I would lose the. Oh, okay, okay. So let's see. Let me go back to the Zoom and see if I can share this one. Zoom, Zoom. Okay. So now I lost my sharing capability. Anyway, you have the link. You can go to the link and you can uh, check it out yourself. Um, so basically, then what do I do? I, I feel like I am I'm an analyst and I tell a story. I take the data, I clean the data, I visualize them, and I tell a story with those data because the stories are much easier to follow, to understand. So um, that, was, that was my talk for you. If you have any question, I'd be happy to entertain those questions. Let me start my question until this, if the students have uh, their own questions. So sure. I, uh, I saw that you mentioned some tools for, uh, for our students to learn that are basically very good in job market. So right now, our students are very good in Python. They know Tableau, Excel, PowerPoint. Do you think is worth? Uh, does it worth if they spend time to learn R and uh, the other tools that you mentioned? Python and R are awesome because R is public, it's free. You don't have to pay to learn it. And there are so many sources. Now, like when I teach at Webster University, uh, students can get access to a lot of these free because the university has license with, um, for example, Tableau and Alteryx. As a student, you can have those for, uh, my student could have them for free for the whole semester, and you can learn it that way. If the university doesn't offer Tableau for free to you or all to export free, uh, free, you go sign up and you can sign up for 14 days free of charge. And in 14 days, if you commit, you learn a lot. <laughs> um, and uh, like, I don't know if you, your university has agreement with lynda.com. Uh, I think Linda is uh, purchased by uh, LinkedIn. LinkedIn, yes. And as, a, as a professor, I have access. I'm not sure if the students tried or not, but right, As students have access to them too. Uh, they are free. Most most likely, they also have free access. Right, that and there are courses that you can take. Like I, I myself took the um, predictive analytics. Uh, last year with Udemy, and that was awesome. It cost me just 11 or $12, and it was just, I learned so much. I wanted to do predictive on uh, Tableau, and I learned tons that I didn't know before. It was just awesome. $12, I felt like it was a lot, it worth a lot more than that. And sometimes Stanford and Harvard University offer courses, are free and you have to watch for them because those are the courses that they cost a lot, but they open it to first come first serve 
the first like 100 people or 200 people, they can get in free. So you might want to get on their distribution list and learn those that AI, R, Python, R, definitely, you should, you should add them to your list. The Tableau is, is awesome. Tableau and Alteryx, it's just, I know Tableau now. I, the more I learn, the more I feel like I don't know enough. <laughs> so, but since last year, I have learned a lot and I have made a lot of visualization too. So basically you have to start from somewhere and don't be worried if you start from nothing. That's what I did. I, after 25 years in the scientific field, I started from scratch and I was not shy to start as a intern. And the first day of my internship, everyone was like perhaps 20 years younger than me. And that didn't intimidate me because that's something that I decided to do. And I wanted to put all my eggs in one basket and do the best. They, they, they tell you that burn the bridge means you can't go back. This is it. You have to, you have to uh, do your best. And it, it was a stressful in the beginning for me because I'm a high achiever. I like to deliver. And I was worried that this is a different field, but if I can, and in the beginning, the first week or two was very stressful and after that my my project started blooming and it was just awesome and it just picked up and it was the fastest speed after that and it was very fulfilling so um i think you 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 chose analytic field that's smart because the market is hot the the demand and these data that generated zillions of them every day every second we need to make sense of them. And with these tools, these tools help us to find a needle in the middle of a haystack. That's the beauty of it. And uh, anywhere you go to work, this tool could help you to uh, understand the business, understand how to run the business, how to improve running your business and all that. Great. That's wonderful. Thank you. It's very really inspiring that you start as an intern after years of experiences. I mean, it, it should be inspiring for our students. My family was laughing at me and they said, you're going back to school. You already, to, you already have a um, bachelor degree, two master's degree. You're going back to school. I love learning. And what I love more is to put that learning into work. When I learn something, I get so excited. I quickly do something with it and share it with those who could benefit from. So um, if you are learning R, if you are learning Python, quickly do something with it, experiment with it, and get a, a snip of it, get a picture of it, put it on your resume, say you learned this and you did this. Uh, I don't make my resume I, I'm every day, constantly I'm being recru uh, recruiters are calling me, writing me, uh, especially um, recruiters for uh, Pfizer, <laughs> because I worked at Pfizer, I worked at vaccine, and they keep wanting me to work there. And I feel like I've been there, I've done that, this is a new field for me, and I'm not going, I'm not interested in looking for a job. I'm happy where I am, I'm content, so I'm not going to risk uh, changing job for better pay perhaps and lose this opportunity that I have working with such nice people, people, such nice company. Yeah. Wonderful. So other students, if you have questions, uh, please go ahead. Also, there are some students who are listening, who would see your presentation later because it's like midnight or, or in the local oh, yeah. So uh, yeah. They, they might reach you later if they have questions. But the students are that are here, if you have questions, please, I mean, just raise your hand or just use your microphone and ask your questions. Hi, Professor. Can I ask questions? Sure. Uh, How do you uh, name? Uh, you she? Uh, you show. You show. You show. OK. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you are dealing with a really large data set, uh, how do you get started? I mean, I mean, uh, if they have 
hundreds of features. Uh, are you going to deal with the features with your domain knowledges or you just uh, with your experience to select some features from the large data set? I mean, if you do this way, uh, you, I, you may have the potential, potential to lose some like the feature that have correlation with the target, right? That's an excellent question. Yes. So this is the thing. For example, before I even start working on a workbook or making a dashboard, I interview my audience. I um, doing the meetings that I have with directors, VPs, management. Uh, I hear their voices. For example, the manager says, "In this uh, county, we are losing some customers." Oh. And I don't know what's going on. So to me, I feel like, wow, let's answer that question because sometimes you don't know the answer. Otherwise, it would be easy to answer it. So you come and you uh, write down or you analyze what could contribute to your customer base. Okay. So you feel like, okay, I can look at the population data. Maybe the population is shrinking. That's why I'm losing my customers. So that would be one, um, uh, one uh, category. Then I can look at the, um, for example, the um, demographic, the education, the number of households that are living there. Or um, if, if these that I'm saying, like population, number of household, education, these are all coming from census. You can get them from census. And you bring yeah. them into map and you feel like, okay, so the population is growing in this county and therefore we should emphasize, do more marketing to attract more customers in this particular county. So that would be, then I go to our um, data, we have it data and self, we call them self BI, business intelligence team. They are the one that they go into warehouse and they grab the data for you. And as you mentioned, there's zillions of features there. Which one would you take? So in the beginning, you decide, for example, I want all our customers. So I want their, I want their account number. I want their mm -hmm. name. I want their um, zip code. I want the county that they live in. I want to, um, I want to, um, uh, let's say how much bill, how much their bill is. So you come up with the list and you tell yourself, BI, these are the features, these are the uh, fields that I like to see on my data source. So they go to the data warehouse and they grab just those data that you ask. And then you bring those into your visualization, into Tableau, into Alteryx. And then you try to visualize them. Sometimes during this visualization, during this data analysis, you realize that, hmm, it would have helped me to know how long this customer has been with my company. I don't have that feel. So you go back to oh. business uh, uh, BI team and you say, can you add this field to the data source? Otherwise, if you bring all the data, every single data, millions of lines of data, yeah. it is slows down your process. Um, yeah. When you try to do something, it takes forever. So you basically, you're filtering what you are uh, interested in. And oh. on top of that filter, then you can do further filtering. You probably filter based on just this year, year 2020. And that oh. narrows down your data source. So um, that's how um, I do it. Yeah, that's really helpful because I'm I'm doing I'm dealing with the data set that uh, about the healthcare field. So there's a lot of medical features that I'm, yes. I'm real I'm really not familiar with those data. So that's right. Yeah. So first, you have to find out what question you're going to answer. And then try to understand what tools, what fields, what features are the ones that could help you to answer that question. Then you are filtering zillions of data into maybe million of data. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then yeah. start 
playing with it. When you play with your data, then you understand that, oh, I could have asked for this. I can do this. They, they open up so much opportunities. And sometimes, sometimes they tell you the truth that sometimes even management don't know what they want. As a data analyst, working with data so much, you get insight into your data. And then you can even, you can share with management, oh, I figured out this, this could help you. And then they could look at it, oh yeah, that, that's great. Because sometimes you're so focused on what you're doing, you have mm. this peripheral, peripheral vision, you don't see others. And as a data, data analyst, you open up your mind, you um, consider the, all different opportunities. And that comes with being a, being exposed to different tools, knowing what tools can do for you. So when you need to answer a question, you have some idea, for example, in here, Tableau could help me. In here, Alteryx could help me. In here, R could help me. But now it's, it's interesting because um, you can integrate R into a Tableau. And Salesforce bought Tableau now, I used to work with Salesforce. Now, all Salesforce data, I can get them into Tableau too. So it's, it's just familiar as yourself as much with uh, as many tools. You don't have to get deep into the details. Believe me, when you get a job, you have the opportunity to dig into details. Um, you just have to have some uh, knowledge that um, and willingness to work with. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. Professor, uh, I have a question regarding R and Python. Uh, I got some knowledge regarding Tableau during this semester with uh, Professor Hamid, uh, but I'm interested to learn R and Python as well. So is there any sequence, like if I learn R first, then it will give some sort of advantage in learning Python? or uh, if I learn Python first, then it will give some advantage in learning R. Is there anything like that? Or I can start with any one of these? And you can start yeah. any of them. You can start any okay. of them. And I hear Python is easier than R. So start with Python then. Okay. And one more question is um, like in doing research. So for example, in PhD or any kind of academic research, which programming language is more helpful? R. R, okay. R. I told you, you can use R in Tableau as well. You can use them in Alteryx as well. And it's free, it's readily available. If you are working, in, let's say you do research, you do uh, work for academia, a Tableau license is so expensive. Uh, it's like 10,000 10, 10, or at least that much. And usually institutions are not that rich. Your PI um, or principal investigator probably doesn't want to spend that much money on every graduate student to learn. Um, so um, definitely uh, that is a good tool to learn. It's a statistical analysis. It helps tremendously. I don't know much about R. I know a little. I know statistics. And I understand how it, it, it's worked, but uh, the R language actually is on my to learn list as well. I know a little, not a lot. I'm not a programmer. I was a scientist for 25, year, 25 plus years. And it's just two years that I'm in, two and a half years that I'm in this field. It's just like, I feel like I am um, overloaded with so much information. I'm like constantly learning and I feel like I don't know anything. <laughs> the more I learn, I feel like I don't know anything. <laughs> so I start from somewhere. Sure, thank you. Thank you for You're the You're welcome, good luck. Good luck to you all. Okay. Is there any other questions? Um, 
I, I have one more question. So. Okay. So, I mean, uh, if you are concerned about the relationship with the features and the targets, uh, how many features, uh, how many features uh, you are going to do the visualizations? I mean, how, how most, how many, how, how to, I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, we can see like two features relationship in uh, one, one picture, right? And maybe three or four. I mean, how, how many at most? Uh, do, um, again, it depends on how many of them can answer your question. Oh. I have, for example, in the Tableau that I use on a daily basis, um, a Tableau data source, I have one data source that has just six fields, and I have mm. one data set that has 40 um, fields. And sometimes there are some fields that are not there, but you can create them. For example, you can create calculated field. You can, for, for example, you want to see what percent your business is growing from last month. Then you can write a calcula calculation for it. Uh, or you can use the predefined table calcula calculation and um, pick from already predefined calculation, like for example, average, sum, or running total. Um, so sometimes your, the number, your customer number is there, but then you can write a calculation, the count of your customer. So you, you get the count some some ca some features might not be there to begin with, might not be there ever, and you create them yourself. If they're missing and you can create them, that's what you do. But I have, again, depends on how you want to answer a question. Uh, I have workbooks that has 50 fields. I have workbooks that they have like 10 fields. Oh. That's all I need to answer one question for a director. Then mm. feel. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And sometimes uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Tableau. You can filter them up front, so it reduces the um, the it speeds up the process. Yeah. Okay. For example, I have data from. We have data. We have been serving customers since I don't know 150 years ago. So we have data there. And now if I bring all those data for like 2 million customers for this many years, my computer crashed. So from the beginning, I filtered just, for example, just 2020. And that oh. reduces all the, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Okay. Thank you very much. It was our pleasure to have you. A very informative presentation, and I believe our my students really enjoy. Thank you very much, and I really appreciate your time and the well prepared presentation that you provide. Well, thank you very much for inviting me. Feel, feel free to connect with me. Um, if you have any question, I'll be happy to answer. Take care. Best of luck to you all. And uh, wish that you land where you want, what you want to do. Good luck. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.